this week. We can have a look at um, some calculations around some more um, AC circuits with uh, non-linear components, reactive components if you like. So we're going to look at Series RC. We finished off with Series RL last week, so we're going to do Series RL RC this week. Series RL and C, and then a parallel RL, RL circuit. And take a look at how you can also solve these IC circuit problems graphically. Alright, so that's what we're going to do this afternoon. So, look at the RC series circuit. What we're talking about is a circuit with a with an AC waveform here, current flowing into a capacitor and a resistor in series. And I've marked on there the two voltages VC across the capacitor and VR across the resistor. Looking at the phaser diagram, we have the in-phase current component in red shown on the horizontal. The voltage across the resistor is always in phase with the current, so that's also set at zero degrees. Then we've got the voltage across the capacitor that is vertically downwards. Yep. And then that means our VS, our resultant voltage, is the hypotenuse of this triangle here. VS into the corner, and the phase angle of that is this angle phi in there. So we can separate from that what we call the voltage triangle, VR on the horizontal, VC negatively downwards, VS on the hypotenuse, and we can get the angle phi from that. We can also get the angle phi from the impedance triangle with the resistance on our horizontal, the capacitive reactance on the um, negative vertical axis, and the impedance Z again on the hypotenuse. So mathematically, we can find Vs using or the magnitude of Vs, how big it is in volts, from um, Pythagoras theorem. It's the square root of Vr squared plus Vc squared. And then we can find the angle using the inverse tan with those values. Yep. We can find the impedance from the square root of R squared plus Xc squared. And again, that same angle, because they have to both be the same, whether you're using the voltage triangle or the impedance triangle, we can find using the inverse tan with um, Xc and R. Okay? So that's what happens when we have an RC series circuit. And if you look at it, is the current leading or lagging the voltage in this circuit as a whole. Because who said leading you, Don, didn't you? Who said leading? No, I didn't like the one. You know what? <laughs> we talk about we talk about these phases going round in an anti-clockwise direction. So if that's the case, the current is ahead of the voltage, it's leading the voltage. We know this circuit, using the word civil, we know this circuit is a capacitive circuit. We expect the current to come before or lead the voltage. So we've got everything the right way round. So if we calculated that voltage, calculated that current, we'd say it is leading by 5 degrees. Equally, we could say the voltage Vs has lagged the current by 5 degrees. Alright? And it is worthwhile at least sketching these phase of diagrams and triangles so you're sure you're heading in the right direction. Alright? So, problem. Resistor 25 ohms. It's 
connect the main series with a capacitor 45 microfarads. Calculate A, the impedance, so we want to find Z and B, the current. Plus phase angle between voltage and current. Okay, so we'll do this one together. Where are we going to start with I? Finding the overall impedance. I draw what would be the impedance triangle. How would I label these sides? What's the horizontal one equivalent to? R? Vertical? Not quite. XC? Yep. And there. That's a definite question mark, but we don't know XC at the moment, we only know C. So how do I find XC? Formula for XC. So far, as so we work to this triangle, we find that we need to know XC here. So we've used the formula, XC is 1 over 2 pi FC, put the numbers in, 70.74 ohms. So now, we know two sides of this triangle, because we know that R is equal to 25, and we now know that XC is 70.74. So, how can we now find Z? Yeah. Now Pythagoras Z R squared plus X C squared M square rooted of R is twenty five squared plus seventy 0.74 squared equals okay there are you If I put them all to some of we'll the three then, yeah? Same number of significant figures as we had there. So the impedance, the total impedance of this circuit is 70.03 ohms. Yeah. Second part of the question says find the current I. So P is find I. How can we do that? Yeah, but we don't know VC, do we? What voltage do we know? Yeah, the 240, which is the supply voltage. Yeah, so we know VS. So if we're going to use VS, what have we got to use for the other part of Ohm's law, the impedance part of Ohm's law? We've got to use the total impedance. Yep. So 
So there it is. 340. Too far. 0.03. I've got 3.2, so... So how I've got 3. Point, what was it, 1.4? So what have you done? 240 over 75.03? Alright, and then the angle is equal to tan to the minus one of XC R. Here's our triangle again just for that. There's R, there's XC. That's the angle we're looking for in there. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we want the inverse of that. So we want tan to the minus one of xc divided by r, which is 25, isn't it? Yeah. Equals. Seventy point five four degrees, leading or lagging the current. Is the current leading or lagging? Circuit is capacitive, I V I L, current needs voltage. So seventy point seven four leading. of the minus one of that. How you calculate the radians? Calculate the need to be in degrees. You won't be like that. You'll make it one day, maybe. No, I don't know how to turn it down. Do it then. Okay. So again, capacitive circuit, current leads voltage. Alright? Have a go at the problem on the next page. So what we got? Capacitor seed connected in series with a 40 ohm resistor. across supply of frequency 60 hertz. Current of 3 amp slows and the circuit impedance is 50 ohms. Calculate the value of the capacitance. So we've got a fine C in this case. Supply voltage and current
we've got to find VR, there's another question mark, and VC, there's a question mark. Okay, so... Off you go. Right, James. Let's have a look at these with problem. So, I we're looking to find um, C. Find C. We're going to find. Well, first of all, we use Pythagoras theorem to say that x C is the square root of z squared minus r squared. You should have. Uh, root 50 squared minus 40 squared equals 30 ohms. Everyone get that? Classic 3, 4, 5 triangle. Multiple of. Therefore, C is equal to 1 over 2 pi F X C. That's the formula for X C rearranged. They just simply change places. So that's 1 over 2 pi times 60 times 30. And that comes out at, as we just discussed, 88.42 microfarads. Well, I'm assuming that you all got that far, yeah? yeah. Change what? From X to C. Well, yeah, because, because you have calculated X C using the impedance triangle, because you weren't given C, so you must have to rearrange the formula for X C to terms of C to find the unknown value. Yep, yeah. alright. B, looking to find the voltage Vs. It's I times Z. We've got to use the two impedance because we're talking about the total voltage across. So we're given the current at 3 amps and we are given the impedance at 50 ohms. So the supply voltage must be 150 volts. Yep. Everybody happy with that? Yep. C. Phase angle. We can get that from tan to the minus 1 of Xc over R. Xc was 30. It's tan to the minus 1 of 30. Over R is 40 equals 36.87 degrees, and from civil, we know that the current is leading voltage. No? So we're looking at we're looking at splitting the words either here or here. So we're talking about a circuit that is capacitive overall, and on that side of the word current I comes before voltage V, so current was leading. Right. Yeah. If we were talking about an inductive circuit overall, we look at that side of the word and we'd say current is after the voltage. So that's lagging. Current lags the voltage. Right, okay. yep. So in every impedance circuit... Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in any circuit that's capacitive overall, I'm being careful here, because we're going to look at a circuit in a minute that's got both a capacitor and an inductor in it, and that circuit can be overall capacitive or overall inductive. So it's what it is overall. And it depends on whether XC is bigger 
or XL is bigger, as you'll see in a minute. Alright? So you, you, you kind of need to draw these sketches, diagrams, to, to understand the, particularly where both components are involved, whether that's overall capacitive or overall inductive. Alright? And then D, VR must equal I by N's law times the resistance R. That is 3 amps times 40 ohms equals 120 volts. Yep. And then E. VC is equal to I times XC, which is 3 times 30 equals 90 volts. Remember, we must remember that they are just the magnitudes. Yep. How big they are. We haven't calculated they haven't considered the angles there. Think about Kirchhoff's voltage law that you learnt with DC circuits. What does that say about the two voltages in this circuit across the components? So here's our resistor, here's our capacitor. We've said we're supplying 150 volts, right? But now we're saying we've got 120 volts across here, and we've got 90 across here. Kirchhoff's voltage law says what about those two voltages? Are you a loop? Clockwise error to anti-clockwise errors, these two should add up to that. 90 plus 120 was never 150 when I went to school. The problem is, they're not in phase with each other. If you took the vector sum, i.e. the full um, magnitude plus angle of those two voltages and added them together, which is beyond this module, we'll be doing that in um, electrical principles, I would think, then you'd see that they do add up to 150 volts at some angle. Alright? But the apparent thing here is that Kirchhoff's voltage law is not being obeyed. Actually it is if you consider the full complex value of those, which is that one's 120 volts at zero degrees, but that one is 90 volts at minus 90 degrees. So they're not in phase with each other. Alright? So, phasor diagram for this circuit is we've got the reference phasor I is equal to 3 amps. We've got VR that's um, 120 volts. We've got VC Ninety volts at angle ninety degrees negative, and then Vs is the vector sum of those two. Yep. So that would be the phasor diagram with this angle in here being thirty-eight point. Seven degrees. Yep. And, the, and the current is leading the voltage. Which which hours do you mean? Oh, um, you you know that um. Well, first of all, we set. 
McLaren as the reference visor because it's the sign for both components. So we always draw that one at zero degrees. Yep. And then we know that the voltage across the resistor is in um, in phase with the current work, or as is in phase difference for resistor. Yeah. And then you have to remember that the voltage across the capacitor is negative 90 degrees, voltage across an inductor positive 90 degrees. You have to remember those. Alright, but the way you can get it is, the way you can get that angle is CRVIL because capacitor current leads voltage. So here's the current, the voltage must be behind it because forwards is anti clockwise. Yep. This it isn't. This topic is not just about being able to do the calculations, it's about understanding these underlying electrical principles about current lags and leads in the two different types of circuit. Okay? Once you, if you can get your head around that, that knowledge, the maths is relatively easy. A bit of Pythagoras theorem, bit of um, sine, cosine, tangent, trigonometry, and you can do your AC electrics. Alright? So, having done, um, we've now done RL and RC separately, so what we're going to have a look at now is the series RLC circuit. It's a circuit where we've got all three components within series. So in an AC circuit containing capacitance C, inductance L, and resistance R, the applied voltage is the vector sum of the three voltages VC, VR, and VL. In a series circuit, the current is the same for all components, and so is most often used still as the reference phaser because the series current is the same for all three. We need to consider the situations where one XL is greater than XC and two when XL is less than XC separately. Alright? So we're going to do that. <laughs> First of all, in the situation where XL, the capacitive reactance, is bigger than XC, the uh, XL, the inductive reactance, sorry, is bigger than XC, capacitive reactance. So here's our circuit diagram. We've got supply voltage, Vs, a single current I flowing, because as a series circuit, um, we only want one current. All the components get the same current. Then we've got three voltages, the green VC across the capacitor, the blue VR across the resistor, and the yellow VL across the um, inductor. So we put those three um, voltages and the current onto a phasor diagram. So our current is in red, our VR is horizontal also in phasor, in blue. The voltage across the inductor is positive, and the voltage across the capacitor is negative. What we get is an overall difference between VL and VC. And because XL is bigger, VL is bigger. And therefore, it takes over. These two qualities work against each other. The bigger VC is, the more it will draw that black line down. Alright, again, impedance triangle, XL upwards, XC downwards. What we get is an overall reactance equal to XL minus XC. Because XL is bigger in this case, that overall reactance is above the line, okay? The circuit is overall inductive. It's got a capacitor in it, but the inductive part is the dominant part. So this impedance vector is above the horizontal. Yeah. Can you see that if we change frequency 
I will not change. XL will, and C will XC. So you change from the frequency, you could get this line to get bigger, and draw that red vector up that way, increasing the angle. Or XL could get smaller, and draw it down towards the horizontal. Okay, again, we can find the magnitude of the supply voltage from Pythagoras theorem. Vs is the root of Vr squared minus the difference between Vl and Vc all squared and the angle can be found by tan to the minus one of the difference of a Vr. It's all about this difference between these two values here and in this case that difference is positive. Similarly, we can do, use the impedance triangle to find the magnitude of the total impedance. It is R squared plus XL minus XC all squared. And the angle, which is the same in either case, so you'd get the same angle whether you use that triangle or the voltage one, we find from tan of the minus one of the difference of XL minus XC over R. But these two components, always remember, they work um, in opposites to each other. So if we increase frequency, XL gets bigger, XC gets smaller. If we, do, if we um, decrease frequency, XL gets smaller, XC gets larger. And the two different versions that we're looking at, um, we're looking in this case at one where XL is greater than XC, in a minute we're going to look at one where XC is greater than XL. The third one is where then two quantities are equal to each other. We're not covering that on this module. We will be doing it on the uh, electrical principles module. All right? So we, we won't cover the case of where those two quantities are equal to each other in this instance. Everyone happy with that and the, and the way those two work um, against each other? So the case where, the second case, where um, XL is less than XC, this time the difference brings the black phaser down below the horizontal. Okay, so in this case, although we got a capacitor and an inductor in the circuit, the circuit is overall capacitive because XC is bigger. It makes this difference here, VL minus VC negative, yeah, and therefore our angle becomes a negative angle, but still found in the same way. VS is root VR squared plus back at 3L minus VC squared and use the tan of the minus one function to find the angle or we can do that either in the voltage or the impedance triangle. Yeah. All okay with that? Yeah? So that circuit is overall in the, uh, capacitive. All right. and if we look at the word CIV IL, it's a capacitive circuit. We've got the current ahead of the voltage, current leading voltage, it's overall capacitive. If we look at the previous circuit, which is overall inductive, we've got the current lagging behind the voltage. CIV IL, inductive circuit, current is after or lagging the voltage going that way round. Yeah? So, have a go at that problem. Coil of resistance 5 ohms. And inductance 120 milliamps. Connected in series with a capacitor of 100 microfarads. Connected to a 300 volt 
50 hertz supply. Calculate the current flow in, the phase difference between supply voltage and current, the voltage across the coil, and the voltage across the capacitor. So there's V out. That's VC. Wants to know I. And wants to know the phase difference. Alright? At this stage, you don't know whether that's overall inductive or overall capacitive. Where are you going to start?